We have an aluminum calorimeter with a mass of 100 grams contains 250 grams of water. The calorimeter and water are in thermal equilibrium at 10 degrees Celsius. Two metallic blocks are placed into the water. One is a 50 gram piece of copper at 80 degrees Celsius. The other is an unknown material block of mass 70 grams and is originally at 100 degrees Celsius. The entire system stabilizes at a final temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the unknown sample? All right, so the term calorimeter means an insulated container. So a calorimetry problem, meaning the sum of all the heat exchange is equal to zero. So we will have Q of the aluminum plus Q of the water it is containing already plus we're going to put in copper and unknown. I'll just call it U for unknown, I guess. Those are all the materials that are put into the container and also accounting for the container itself, the aluminum. All of these Qs are going to add up to be zero. So energy in terms of heat because of those different temperatures is going to exchange and move and transfer between the materials in here. Now, let me write over here. Aluminum, we have the mass of 100 grams, so 0.1 kilograms. Off the test notes, I've written down C of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Water, the mass, 0.25 kilograms. Sea of water, 4190. We have copper. So its mass is 50 grams. Off the test notes, C is 385. And then this unknown material has a mass of 70 grams. So let me write that in kilograms like I did the others. So 0 0.07 kilograms. The C is what we're trying to find. So this would be an example of an experiment that could be done. Let me go ahead and write the temperatures by them too as well. So we have our aluminum and water are both initially at 10 degrees Celsius. So the calorimeter and water are in thermal equilibrium. That means they have the same temperature at 10 degrees Celsius. The copper is initially at 80 degrees Celsius. And this unknown material is initially at 100 degrees Celsius. Now the final temperature of the whole system is 20. Everything in this system is going to end up at the same temperature. So this is our T final. Everything's going to go through a temperature change. Nothing is going through a phase change. So the only equation we need for each of these terms is the MC delta T. We don't need an M times L because nothing is changing phase. So we're going to have mass of the aluminum. Just use capital A. C of the aluminum. Delta T. 
for the aluminum plus mass of the water, C of the water, delta T of the water, plus M of the copper, C of the copper, delta T of the copper, plus mass of this unknown material, we don't know what it's made of, C of this unknown material, delta T of this own unknown material. So we actually know everything except for C. We know everything ends up at a final temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. We know the mass of everything. We know their initial temperature and the C values off the table for everything else. All right, so let's plug in. So aluminum 0.1 kilograms, C is 900. Aluminum ends up at a final temperature of 20 and it started at an initial temperature of 10. Keep in mind delta T is final temperature minus initial. The second term, our water, we have, oh sorry, plus mass of the water 0.25. C, 4190, final temperature of 20, initial temperature of 10. Copper, mass of 0 0.05, C of 3085, final temperature of 20, initial temperature of 80. Notice this is gonna give us a negative value meaning the copper is losing energy or giving energy away, which hopefully makes sense. It's gonna cool off and its energy is going into the water and aluminum. This unknown material, we're looking for this C, the specific heat, final temperature of 20, the initial temperature here was 100, So this all needs to add up to be zero. So 900 10, 4, 7, 5. Well, this term is going to end up negative. Plus 35. This last term will be negative as well, again, because it's cooling off. So our only unknown is that C, if I take that term to the other side, getting 18.25, we have Three sig figs, so 18, 30 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Would be the specific heat of this material. So experimentally, we can determine specific heats. These types of experiments are pretty boring to do because you have to put everything together. There would of course also be a thermometer because you have to watch the system and wait until the temperature stops changing. So wait till you reach that final steady temperature.